everybody, Ketwalski here checking in with another one of our hashtag Soong Files videos. Today we're going to be talking about the other known variations of the NX class starship that was in use by the United Federation of Planets, basically United Earth at the time. Um, and as they transition slowly from the NX designator into the NCC, you know, slash USS designators that came later on in their history. So we're going to jump right into this. Obviously, we know about NX-01, which is the Enterprise. We know about NX-02, which is the Columbia. And we're going to start right at the NX-03. Now, I'm going to keep this static image up here of the NX-04 Discovery. Only reason is because we don't have exact photos of each of the variations of the NX-01s. Or excuse me, the NX-type ships. But they all essentially look just like this. And it actually wasn't until the NX-16 and beyond that they actually started to make things a little bit more modular and change out the way that the ships looked closer towards the Daedalus class starship, which we'll get to in a different video. video. Okay, so the NX-03 was a United Earth Starfleet ship uh, in service during the mid-22nd century. Along with the Columbia, the ship was stationed on Starbase 1 in 2156, when five Romulan warbirds attacked the station, beginning the first Earth-Romulan War. Fleet Captain Erica Hernandez of the Columbia ordered the Excalibur to flee the battle and warn Starfleet. Captain Stiles obeyed, but the ship was chased down by faster Romulan warbirds and lost with all hands except for Bryce Schumar, the ship's first officer, who left via a shuttle pod and was able to warn Starfleet of the incoming Romulan attack. NX-04, or more commonly known as the USS Constellation, was the fourth NX-class starship in service in the mid-22nd century. And it was also one of the five remaining NX-class ships in service all the way up until 2160. The Constellation was launched in 2156, shortly before the outbreak of the Romulan War. When the war began, the Warp 5 fleet stayed outside the system while slower speed ships defended the Sol system. In 2160, the Constellation was unable to participate in the Battle of Sharon because the ship underwent repairs after successfully defending Star Base 2. Up next, we have the Atlantis, NX-05. The ship was also in service during the 22nd century. She was under construction by November 2159 at the Proxima Shipyards and launched in late 2156. Her first mission, along with Starfleet's other NX-class starships, was to test the warp detection grids provided by the Vulcans for a Coalition World Defense Grid. Now, this grid was defending essentially the Andorian, Vulcans, Tellarites, and United Earth territories from Romulan incursion. Uh, this was an early detection grid that they were using in order to try to detect when cloaked Romulan warbirds were actually entering into the Alpha Quadrant that was defended by the Coalition at the time. At one point, Atlantis accompanied the newly refitted Columbia class on a days-long standoff with a squadron of four Romulan birds of prey. The Romulan shot first and hit the Atlantis. The Earth forces damaged one of the birds of prey and disappeared with the others. Atlantis was destroyed on June 20th, 2156 over Tau Ceti IV during the Romulan invasion, but the crew managed to escape by getting to their pods. USS Defiant NX-06. Now, there is a little bit of debate, and I want to go ahead and say this really quick as a kind of a caveat. There is a debate between a few different ships of which ones were the NX-06 and the NX-07. Now, I am going to maintain that these two ships are the more proper beta canon versions of the NX-06 and NX-07, uh, just because of the references used for them are actually the Starfleet Federation, the first 150 years, and the other ones were more personal novels written by specific authors. So that's why I'm going to go with these two ships instead of the other ones. But again, there are multiple variations of who the NX-06 and 07s were, even during the time prime line, not even considering alternate time prime lines. The USS Defiant was in service around the mid-22nd century and was an active service ship all the way up until the year 2160. Along with the USS Enterprise and Atlantis, the Defiant took part in the Battle of Sharon, and it was destroyed above Sharon by Romulan warbirds during that battle. The USS Lexington, or as some know it as the NX-07, was of course active in service up until the years 2160. Following the declaration of war against the Romulan Star Empire in 2156, the Admiral Raphael Douglas cherry-picked individuals from influx of labor to the Utopia Polynesia shipyards. Less than three weeks after they declared the construction on the Lexington and the Defiant, they were actually launched from the Utopia Polynesia shipyards. Just think about that. The Utopia Polynesia shipyards created two NX class warships in three weeks time. That is phenomenal. On January 
On 10 January in the year 2160, the Lexington led a fleet of Denobulan warships towards the Romulans in a bid to get the Romulans to retreat from the Battle of Sharon and to defend their homeworld. The ruse was successful and enabled the USS Enterprise and the Atlantis to destroy the IRW Koto, the NX-09. We don't have any information about the NX-08, unfortunately, so we're going to have to go straight to the NX-09. Now, this was only spotted during the Star Trek video game known as Legacy. It's a game that came out for the Xbox 360, and I think you could get it on PC for different variations. But I actually did play this game when I was much younger. And I do remember seeing the Avenger there and being a part of one of the missions that you're involved with with Jonathan Archer's NX-01 Enterprise. Um, but the service was still, this ship was still in service until around the year 2159 when it was unfortunately destroyed. And the final ship that we actually have record of is the Curry NX-16. This was the last NX version, the next NX variant ship to be deployed until they actually switched out to the NCC designators, the USS and NCC designators for all of their starships in the Federation. So this was the last NX ship to be constructed and actually used in service up until the year 2159 slash 2160 when the ships, all the NX ships were actually slowly phased out as the new Daedalus class starships were phased into the fleet. Anyways, that concludes today's video. I hope that you guys and gals enjoyed hearing a little bit more about the variations of the NX starships. Me personally, I love the NX look. I love the style. It's one of my favorite things about the Enterprise show is the ship itself. And I think it just looks awesome. I love the idea that we built up from these slower, less warp capable ships all the way to this massive, powerful Warp 5 fleet. The you know, Warp 5 fleet became very, very powerful during the first Earth Romulan War and was vital in the Federation ensuring victory, or at least rather a ceasefire, in during that conflict. So so you did not want to fuck around with the Warp 5 fleet. When these ships came coming and knocking, you better get to running, not even a rocking. You better get to running because they're going to fuck your shit up. So that concludes today's lore video. Please tell me what you guys and gals think about this. I want to remind everybody again that this is all from the beta canon. So Alpha Canon being the shows and movies, Beta Canon being from the books. Most of this stuff came from the, Star the Starfleet book, the first 150 years, while some of it did come from video games as well, the Star video game Star Trek Legacy. I just want to throw that caveat in there for those of you who are look looking to find out more additional information about where these particular ships appeared in the Star Trek canon slash timeline. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Please throw a like and a subscribe up on YouTube. Please throw a follow up on Twitter. Please follow me on Facebook at Facebook.com at RealKitWalski. And I will see you guys next time. Live long and prosper, my trekkies.